Hello, everyone, and welcome. Today, you're attending the Summon Roadmap and 316 and Toadmap, uh, in Toda, excuse me, 316 and Toda Services Roadmap Overview uh, webinar. I'm Brent Cook. Uh, I am the Product Manager for Summon, uh, and I'm here to share with you some of the exciting things we have planned for 2021, as well as to answer any questions that you might have. So we'll start by focusing on the Summon Roadmap, talk about some of the great things that are coming as part of that. Um, in order to make sure that we have a well-rounded and well-developed product, uh, we like to think about the roadmap in various areas or pillars that we have that uh, keep our system running smoothly. And that includes areas such as search and exploring, all the functionality involved in making sure that uh, the results are as relevant as possible and giving users the tools they need in order to be successful um, in their searching, uh, developing an open system so that it integrates with systems uh, across your uh, your institution, regardless of where they come from, whether they are an, another ex libris or ProQuest system or an external system, as well as making sure that open access is a, an important part of your summon instance. Uh, the user experience, uh, the user interface, and everything that uh, the user needs or has around them to make sure that they're successful in their searching. Uh, library empower empowerment, uh, giving you the tools you need on the back end and the front end to manage uh, the experience in your content and make sure that it's successful and a variety of other areas as well. And I'll go into details on each of these areas in just a moment. So next, I'm gonna take a little bit of time to, to um, break things down by quarter for you. Um, as a reminder, we have one major release each quarter and it is usually on the first Wednesday of the month. Um, and other, every other month when there is not a major release, we usually have a maintenance release on that first Monday. Well, the major releases include a preview environment uh, two weeks prior to the release. Uh, release notes and documentation, uh, the maintenance, maintenance releases on the off months. Uh, you usually don't have any customer facing features. If we do, I always send out a note about that. But you, that's usually the exception rather than the rule. And those maintenance releases are really around meeting specific customer needs, uh, doing cleanup for the system, uh, doing performance and tools and maintenance updates like that. So for this year, we have the February release, which went out uh, about a week, week and a half ago on February 3rd. Uh, that included an update to the APA citation style, uh, moving that to the seventh edition. Um, and we did some work on the CRVS summon piece, which is uh, um, in the background. We haven't released that functionality yet. I'll talk more about the status and the process for CRV and summon a little later in today's presentation. For May, we have the release plan for May 12th. That's the second Wednesday of that month. Uh, we've done that traditionally uh, because Iluna here in the uh, North America is on the first uh, week of May. And so we wanna make sure you're back at your institution when we go live in production. So May will be released on May 12th and uh, there will be the preview environment two weeks prior to that. Um, and we have a variety of great features in that release, including some that come from the NERS or the new enhancement request system, uh, which is a voting system that's brought to you by Igloo and Aluna. Uh, thank you so much for all the folks who participate in that uh, um, group and help make sure that that uh, happens. Thanks to all the folks who vote in that uh, um, process as well. Um, also, we pull a lot of the ideas for the NERS voting from the idea exchange. So I really appreciate everyone who posts there on the idea exchange and provides ideas for us to develop for summer. So uh, that's just my big thank you to everyone in the community for your participation. You're what really makes this product successful. Uh, so again, I'll call them out as we go through, but there are a variety of features that came from that nurse process, including the ability to separate prints from eBooks when searching, um, we'll make some changes to the facets there, uh, the ability to apply easy proxy uh, to the DOI link in a preview pane is another NERS feature that came, that we'll be delivering this year. Uh, we're working on improvements to the topic source display, and we have a project and you'll see it uh, um, straddles a couple of different months around making it more convenient to access full text by providing more direct links to PDFs. Our next release planned will be the August release, which is for August 4th, the first Wednesday of that month. Again, preview environment available two weeks prior to that. Um, we'll do the second wave of work this year for earlier adopter access uh, for summon or CRVS summon. Uh, we'll uh, do some modifications to citations to replace the long URL with the short URL, again, courtesy of the NERS voting. Um, and another one, courtesy of NERS, that is better tag matching for best bets. Um, we've got some work on the central discovery index or CDI um, around subject heading normalization. 
uh, we, and again, I mentioned we have a second phase of that uh, access to full text via direct links to PDFs. So for our fourth quarter release, we're going to do something a little different uh, this year. Again, uh, we're going to release in December on December 15th. Um, the reason why we're moving it from November to December is that we are going to do a light refresh of the Summon User Interface. Face. I'll talk a little bit about what that means a little later in the presentation, but we want to make sure that we give you as much time as possible uh, to adjust any training materials that you might have um, or for us to make any uh, adjustments we might need to. Uh, so there will be a little bit longer preview window for that December 15th release, and then we've planned it so that it hopefully uh, lands after the end of your quarter or semester rather than November, which would be in the middle of many people's quarters or semesters. Uh, another NERS feature that we have on the release schedule is the ability to display all links and results for a brief result. Um, some work around uh, corrected spelling or the did you mean functionality. Uh, the ability to do an exact search on some additional fields for summon um, and improved tools for uh, database recommender management as well. And then uh, finally, at this high level, I want to talk about some ongoing work that we do in 2021. Because of the nature of these types of improvements, uh, they are not necessarily tied to a specific release, but are ongoing work throughout the year. And that includes improvements to relevance, uh, performance improvements that can uh, improve areas such as search response time, uh, load balancing and management, and rights processing. And I'll go into more details on that in just a moment. Um, accessibility improvements and clients. Uh, we have a lot planned to make sure that the systems are as accessible as possible. We try to address those as they come in. Uh, we also have some planned larger initiatives to make sure that, that Summon is uh, accessible as people need it um, and the way that they interact with the system. And then finally, we'll work on analytics and reporting. So the first area I'd like to focus in on is the Central Discovery Index, or CDI. Uh, as you know, about this time last year, we moved uh, to the Central Discovery Index from the Summit Index. Uh, there's a lot of great benefits that we uh, get from that, uh, including a larger uh, base of uh, folks working on it since it now serves both uh, Summit and Primo. Some of the things that we have planned for CDI um, is the improved normalization of subject headings, and that'll be in the second half of the year. Um, and the idea there is to focus in on subject headings and do some work in improving that area and cleaning up some of the items in there that need to be cleaned up. Um, we'll also uh, continue to look for ways to continue uh, improving performance. So responses from the API, uh, which is used both by Summon API users and by the Summon user interface, um, and uh, better load balancing and management, allowing us to take more traffic uh, and respond to it uh, more quickly. And then finally, we're looking at the rights update process in CDI and improving that as well, uh, both for performance um, and for length of time it takes to process those rights. Uh, currently, the time frame for that is around 48 to 72 hours. Um, and of course, we'll see if we can shorten it, but also making sure that it is a robust process that can handle all of the updates that come across it on a daily basis. Next, I want to focus in on search and exploring. Uh, that area, again, is really focused on how uh, relevant the results are and the tools used by the end user to help improve that relevance. So, for example, this first feature, which again comes to us courtesy of NERS voting, um, is the ability to separate print uh, from ebooks when searching. Currently, the facet we have for uh, print and electronic books are combined into a book ebook facet. The new facet will focus on each format alone, uh, splitting that out, the ability to include or exclude either uh, content type will be available as well, and this should be configurable by the institution. This release is planned for May of 2021. We're also working on better tag matching for best bets. Again, this comes courtesy of NERS. Um, basically, currently, if a best bet is going to show up at the top of the results, and for those who may not be familiar with the feature, best bets is a way for you to use simple, uh, rich HTML to put a message at the top of your search results uh, to hopefully guide patrons um, or users in ways that they might need at the moment they need it. Uh, in the past, you had to have an exact match on any tags that you use to trigger that best bet to display at the top of the result set. Uh, that's challenging because that means you need to put in as many tags as possible to be able to capture as many different variations on the tags that people might be using. Uh, and by taking the best bets and those tags and treating them more like we do other search terms, 
uh, it will make for hopefully a better experience overall. Um, they'll reduce the need to create all those extensive tags, and it means that if there are additional search terms present around those tags, uh, the, the users will still get the benefit of that mention uh, via best bets based on that tag. And again, this is planned for release in August of 2021. Another NERS feature that's coming this year is the ability to do more exact searches um, in addition to being able to use quotation marks in uh, as part of a search. Um, you'll be able to now go into the advanced search page and select more things with an exact match. There are a few fields that already allow you to set an exact match as a criteria for use on that advanced search page. Uh, this will extend that and include things like call number, ISBN, ISSN, DOI, OCLC number and patent number. And again, hopefully this will help people um, do a faster, more targeted research, uh, search to find the item that they need. And this is planned for release in December. And as I mentioned earlier, and sort of the biggest thing in this category of search and exploring is our relevance for summer. Uh, that is an ongoing process and every year we work on improving it. Um, and hopefully making it uh, react better to uh, the content mix that you have and the queries that uh, end users have. Um, this is an iterative process. Um, we'll be focusing this year on how do we do some improvements based on dynamic and static rank algorithms. Uh, if you are not familiar with the difference between the dynamic elements and static elements used in the algorithm, uh, those refer to a couple different things. For dynamic, that really refers to things that happen in the moment of the search. So what are the search terms that are being used uh, to make the search? Uh, what about filters or facets or other uh, um, uh, limiters that you're putting in there? And how do those interact with the algorithm? So that's the dynamic piece that we'll be taking a look at, seeing how we can improve that. Static rank has to do with uh, um, the actual elements within the uh, um, metadata itself. So if something is peer reviewed, for example, that might get a boost up. Uh, certain content types may get a certain boost up uh, if, and other things like that. So if there are various uh, markers to the record, uh, those will be taken into consideration. And we're taking a look at how those are weighted and how those interact with that dynamic piece again, um, which the dynamic piece would be rather than the weighting of a field, it might uh, be taking a look at what field the uh, search term is appearing in and how important that is. So for example, an exact match on a phrase in a title uh, field uh, takes gets more weight usually than something in full text, because obviously if it's in the title, uh, that uh, indicates more significance than something within the full text itself. Um, our, our process for reviewing relevance uh, algorithms is such that uh, we, uh, we don't know uh, if a particular test will go through and become our uh, main algorithm after the testing. Uh, basically, what we do is in order to ensure that the changes that we make or determine if the changes we make are better than the current algorithm, we'll take a small percentage of after doing internal tests and using uh, query logs and things like that just to see how it performs. We will then uh, take that uh, new algorithm and uh, take a small percentage of, of traffic from some and feed it this new algorithm, and we'll compare the interaction with users from that algorithm uh, to the existing algorithm. And if there's better interaction, more people clicking on the first three to five links, for example, then we will promote that as the main algorithm for someone uh, moving forward. And again, implementation or timing for this will be determined by the success of these relevant tests. And sometimes these relevant tests come back and let us know that the weighting that we have is appropriate. So that also could be a successful test as well. So that release is planned throughout 2021. And if we do make major changes to the algorithm, um, I'll always do my best to notify you that, of that when that happens. So next, I want to talk a little bit about the user experience, and that really um, is focused on the user interface. Um, but really, even more than that, the user's entire experience as they try to interact with someone and the various tools that they use to interact with someone and making sure that that's working as well as possible. So we have a variety of uh, things that we're working on for that this year, including an improvement around the topic source display. Um, if you've never noticed before, in Topic Explorer for the encyclopedia entry, the source name in the past has been the name of the uh, collection that you select in the back uh, end in order to activate that as part of use in Topic Explorer. So Oxford University Press, for example, might show up as the source um, in that type. Uh, encyclopedia entry. Um, and then at the bottom, when you have the more link to see more about that encyclopedia entry, a lot of times if you click on it, 
it will go to a more specific title within that collection. So it's still part of the larger collection, but it may be from the Encyclopedia of Ornithology, for example, uh, is one that I saw come across recently in a case. Uh, and users can get a little confused that, you know, the initial entry has one label and then they go to a site that has another label. Uh, so we're working to align that display um, in order to provide a better user experience and meet their expectations. Uh, and that is planned for a May release as well. Next, as I mentioned, we've got a larger process working this year uh, to work on direct links to PDFs and increase that within the summer. Uh, in the past, we've had unpaywall links for PDFs. We will expand that to other sources for PDFs. Uh, what that means is that uh, you'll have to be able to configure this and basically where the PDF link uh, appears for unpaywall right now, we may have some other options there uh, from other sources that have a direct link to PDF that you can use. This will be configurable by institutions. So if you decide that you want to keep things the way they are, you certainly can. Uh, we will have early access to this functionality in July and then make it available to everyone in the October timeframe. Another nearest feature that we have on the roadmap for 2021 uh, is short URLs for citations. Uh, if you're not familiar with this one, uh, currently, we have a, a very long encrypted URL that we use for summon links. Uh, the reason for that long URL is to make them as permanent a permalink as we possibly can. Uh, what's stored in all that encryption or all the characters that you see in that extremely long URL is enough information so that if someone uh, makes a citation today and that particular journal and article is coming to them through your library via one source, and then uh, at some time in the future, you make a change, and you no longer subscribe to that original source, but you can still have access to that article from other sources, other publishers or distributors. Um, this long URL basically helps resolve that issue so that you can still find that exact same article regardless if it's coming from a different provider um, that you may be subscribing through um, from your institution. So that's the benefit to that long URL. The challenge with that is it's so long that sometimes we'll see people's um, citations uh, in their section and their articles or papers may be longer than their actual article because of the length of those URLs. Those URLs are so long. So what we'll be doing is creating a short, short URL management system for someone that makes it easier and faster to create that URL. Um, and uh, we'll make that improvement for all citation styles so that again, you'll have a nice short URL that should still have that benefit of the long encrypted URL and that resolution to the best possible source for that particular article. This is planned for August of 2021, and it should hopefully provide a better user experience uh, around citation management. Another nearest feature that we'll be having on the roadmap this year is the improved corrected spelling, or did you mean? Um, basically, we'll be modifying that to align more with what users expect uh, from the various places where they do searches. So uh, um, commercial search engines, uh, your operating systems on mobile devices, things like that, all tend to automatically correct for spelling. So if it looks like you have uh, mistyped something or misspelled something, my personal challenge is for some reason my fingers always want to uh, type a word that ends in T-I-O-N out of order and I end up spelling it T-I-N-O. Um, and so if I do a search on a search engine, it will usually uh, do a search and return results based on the corrected spelling. And then there will be a link below it that says, you typed in this, which we thought was misspelling. Uh, click here to search that original phrase. Um, and the thinking there is that more often than not, if you do identify something as a, as a misspelling in a search query, um, it is a, a true misspelling and folks would really rather search on that. Um, and occasionally there is something that looks misspelled, especially if you're talking about things like product names um, or various internet conventions where it doesn't match traditional spelling. Um, you, you may want that quote unquote misspelled word uh, to be the thing you searched and clicking on the link below the search box will make that happen. Uh, again, this will, um, we're gonna make this configurable if possible. Um, and uh, again, the process is um, if it looks like it's misspelled, uh, we'll return results based on that corrected spelling and then uh, um, uh, provide the ability to search on the original terms as a secondary search. And this is planned for December 2021. Finally, for the user interface section and the user experience section, I wanted to talk a little bit about what I meant when I talked about a summon user interface refresh. 
it's been about five years since we've done any kind of uh, um, major changes to the summon results page. Uh, the idea here isn't necessarily to reinvent the page. It's to really focus in on overall usability of the page. We've added a lot in those last five years. There's a lot of new functionality. So we're going to be taking a look at how all of those pieces interact together and help, helping coordinate their interaction uh, so they work better for you on the page. So we'll be taking a look at things like uh, improving the facets, uh, the apply button, the scroll bar in there, um, how uh, includes and excludes work. Uh, we'll do some polishing there. And we'll take a look at the short display and preview windows. We've added a lot of uh, content to both of those areas, making sure that that all works well. And then, of course, taking a look at accessibility, making sure that everything is accessible as possible uh, for all your users, no matter where or how they're using Sun. So again, this won't be a completely new user interface. Um, it will be uh, some, but there will be visible changes in the user interface. Um, and these, a lot of these will be changes that you will need to inherit um, as the production release goes out. Uh, so again, that's why we've planned this for the middle of December uh, so that it will hopefully be after your quarter um, or semester has finished out and we'll provide an extended preview window for it so that you can take time to give us feedback and you'll have the chance to update any sort of documentation or training you might have uh, to match any of the tweaks that we made to the overall user interface. Next, I want to talk a little bit about library empowerment, the tools that we create to hopefully make it easier for you to manage Summon and uh, have a successful relationship with your patrons on using these tools. For example, we're going to do some work on the back end to make database recommender work um, better from uh, a coordination or implementation standpoint. Uh, when we first made database recommender years ago, there were only a few hundred databases to manage. We now have thousands of databases in the central discovery index, and that list makes it a little challenging to manage database recommender on the back end. So what we're working on here is a way for you to be able to activate, rank, and curate sources a lot more easily. Um, this will be most likely a batch process for database recommender changes, the ability for you to assign priority lists to databases, to download a, a spreadsheet of um, how things are configured currently, make changes within that spreadsheet and then upload them and have those be applied uh, uh, more easily. And again, this is planned for December of this year. Um, and I should actually call out real quick on that last one. One of the um, sources for that has been the Topic Explorer and Database Recommender uh, Focus Group as part of Illumina and Igloo. And thanks to all the folks who are on that committee and all of the contribution that they do to help make our product a little bit better. Um, and on that theme of uh, you helping make the product better, uh, the display all links and the results is another NERS feature uh, coming to you courtesy of Igloo and Illumina. Uh, what this is is the ability uh, to display all full text links that you might be subscribed to in the knowledge base. Uh, the thinking behind this is that it could be possible that the first link or the second link doesn't work. Um, by, by providing uh, a variety of links, um, it will maximize the use of your resources and make sure that the user has the most chances to get a successful um, access to content. Um, this will be configurable by institution. And again, it's planned for the February, or excuse me, the December release. And then finally, I want to call out the APA citation style improvement that we just made for Summon. Uh, that went live as part of the February release. That went live on February 3rd. Uh, basically, this allows you to now save or export items in the APA 7th edition format. Uh, you'll find it in the saved items folder or using the citation icon with these results to export uh, in this format. Um, and again, this was released in February. Next, I want to talk a little bit about accessibility uh, and what we have planned for that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is an ongoing process. Um, as much as possible, as accessibility issues come in, we address those um, immediately and get them in as soon as release that we can. Uh, for larger or more complex uh, issues, that may take a little bit more time. Uh, we are making sure that in each release, we're doing everything we can to address accessibility. And that includes, first and foremost, making sure that we're um, developing accessible first features uh, so that anything new that we add continues uh, to support accessibility and does not uh, interfere with what we already have out there. Uh, but also this year, we're reviewing the um, support for 
Web Content Accessibility Guidelines 2.1 or WCAG. Um, and so we will be uh, doing some internal and external auditing of the system um, and making sure that it works well and uh, implementing any improvements that we find during that auditing uh, to improve the product. And again, this is planned throughout 2021. Uh, obviously, when we do the uh, user interface refresh in December, there'll be a lot of work done there around accessibility, um, and we may have some enhanced releases and in uh, the major releases throughout the year. Next, I want to talk a little bit about how we build an open system, and that includes uh, the ability to tie in to other Xlibris and ProQuest products, tie into systems outside of uh, our, uh, our family of products that you use as part of your day-to-day -day work, um, working with open access content, things like that. So we want to make sure that the summit is as open as possible. One of the areas that we're working in there is better integration with uh, um, Easy Proxy and the DOI field link. Uh, currently, uh, if uh, um, in this preview pane or in the short description in the search results, you click on the DOI link. Uh, authentication may not be applied there. Uh, and that, uh, by adding uh, the easy proxy um, to the beginning of the DOI URL, we'll uh, hopefully address that issue and make it so that people can more easily access content using that link. Uh, this will be configurable by institution and is planned for release in May of this year. And then finally, for someone, I just want to touch base real quick on what we're doing with Sierra via Summon. And this is the integration of those two systems so that you can use Sierra on the back end to manage your instance of Summon. Um, even if you're not a Sierra institution, this is important functionality for you because as part of this, we are um, working on SAML um, and using that for integration as well. And while that won't be an initial part of the Sierra via Summon uh, work uh, that is released this year, um, the groundwork for it is being laid so you can expand beyond Sierra after this project. But this project in itself um, is really about uh, better integration of that system in Sun, um, making it so that it's easier for users to um, interact with their account. So like, access what uh, holdings they might have or check out content um, or basically review a My Library page that contains a lot of information for them. Um, and then on the back end, making it easier for your staff to administer both Sun and Sierra. Um, this will be rolled out throughout the year. Um, at the end of this uh, quarter, we'll begin uh, engaging with early adopters and doing feedback from them. Um, uh, and then a second release of functionality coming around the summertime for those early adopters to do a second pass around um, and then hopefully go live in production with. And then once they're live, uh, we will make it available for all Summit and CR customers in the second half of 2021. Next, I want to talk uh, about 360 Nintendo services and what we have planned for them uh, as well for 2021. So just a quick uh, um, call out, and this is also true for um, uh, functionality for Summon as well. Um, this roadmap uh, information we're sharing um, is somewhat confidential. Uh, we are providing it to you for planning uh, purposes. Uh, however, it can be subject to, to change uh, without prior notice uh, due to changing circumstances. A great example is last year when we all made the move uh, to working remotely as the pandemic uh, really hit us, started to hit us. Uh, we did make some adjustments to our release schedule uh, to be as conservative as, as possible um, as that situation was uh, changing. So um, in most years, in fact, last year is the first time in a while we've had to have any changes to the sun roadmap. Uh, but in most years, there aren't changes, but there is always the possibility of something unexpected coming up like a pandemic. So to give you an overview of what we have planned for each half of the year, uh, for the first half, we're looking at to roll out of more counter R5 reports, um, making the new 360 API for library holdings uh, available generally, um, adding video titles to the 360 mark update service, um, providing some uh, more tools for overlap analysis to be able to separate uh, your analysis by format um, and a view changes uh, export option. And I'll talk about more, all of those more in just a moment. Second half of 2021 uh, for the Electronic Journal Portal, or EJP, uh, we'll be adding the ability to filter out not track titles from the autocomplete sections for EJP. Um, we'll add a videos only search to EJP. Um, we have planned some enhancements for the 360 link um, ILL form. Uh, we have uh, uh, planned 
some improvements around the option to display most recent coverage um, options in the EJP. Um, and then finally, the ability to upload a database details report. So to take a look at uh, a little more deeply in what's planned for the first half of the year, uh, more rollouts of counter R5 reports. Um, so we're rolling these reports out to reflect the new standards, uh, measurements, and metrics for counter R5. Um, it will include the ability to uh, report on ebook, e-journal, and database uh, reports with calculated cost per use included. Um, and there will be R5 metrics available for custom reports. Um, and the impact for this is this reporting will allow you to uh, take advantage of your e-resource holding metadata uh, for any sort of analysis, special projects, or downstream applications that you might have. Next, I want to talk a little bit about the new 360 API for library holdings. We did some uh, early access work at the end of last year, and now we're making that available uh, for everyone. And what this is, is it a, is an open API for 360 and total libraries to be able to query the details of their profile holdings. Uh, so that means that if you'd like to collect information regarding providers, databases, or titles, that will be a lot easier now. And again, this is something that you can use to uh, do some analysis, um, using these e-resources, uh, holding metadata um, for special projects, um, or use it for other applications. Next, I want to talk a little bit about how we're adding video titles into the 360 Mark Update Service. Um, this is adding bibliographic records for video titles um, in addition to the current journal and book titles that you see in the 360 Mark Update Service. Um, that will make sure that we have records in there that use the best possible practices for metadata description for video um, and that they are added, updated, or deleted per existing rules um, for that service processing. And the impact for that will be that it should hopefully make those video titles more discoverable uh, for end users. We see a lot more use of video these days, especially as people are working remotely. Um, so we think it's important to be able to get as much information and metadata around those video titles into someone as possible to make it as discoverable as possible. And which uh, subscriptions, uh, the details on the subscription services will be uh, forthcoming. Uh, so we'll, we'll provide some more information there as well. As of the February release, again, just a little over a week ago, we completed the first release for um, 360 and total services. And that included this overlap analysis results separated by format. Uh, what this does is it allows you to uh, run a report um, on just a specific uh, um, format type um, or to export all types and then be able to filter results by that type. So the impact for you is that this will make it easier for you to view collections, um, um, holdings by grouping. Uh, so that if you want to determine what your collections look like for a specific format, uh, this should give you the tools uh, to give better visibility into that for you. And then finally, uh, for the first half of the year for 316 in TOTA, uh, we have the plan to re release a view changes export uh, report, the ability to take the um, details of the view changes audit log and export that. Um, this has been a long-standing enhancement request um, to be able to export this information in spreadsheet-friendly format, uh, to be able to uh, take a look at, at uh, basic statics for view changes, so what's been changed within the system in the past, um, and allows you to filter search and gather basic, basic statistics based on those logs. Thank you, everyone, for the time that you've taken today to attend today's webinar and learn a little bit more about what we have for 2021. Uh, what we have planned um, and thank you to everyone for your continued support and, uh, and engagement with the product. Uh, Summon is the success that it is today because of your input um, and your um, thoughts and attention. So thanks for the comments on the listserv. Thanks for when you reach out to me directly and thanks for your questions today. If you think of something else that you'd like to share with me or you have other questions or just uh, other information that you'd like to share, my email address is there on the screen brent.cook at exlibrosgroup.com. Don't hesitate to contact me with any comments or concerns. Uh, and thank you so much for taking your time today to attend. Uh, be well, be happy, be safe out there, and let us know what we can do to help.
Thanks a lot, everybody. That concludes the session today. Uh, have a great weekend uh, once it starts tomorrow afternoon. Thanks. Bye-bye.